Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 387. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. And well, it's been a week since the finale happened. And I think everybody had time to process what just happened. And appreciate what we had. <coughs> so, um, let's... Hmm... You know, there's a lot of news this week and a lot of them are questions of what happened and stuff. So let's not dilly dally and get right into it. <coughs> and first news is uh, Big Jim did a Q&A. And so Big Jim uh, did a Q&A on, I'm guessing, Twitter. And he answered a lot of questions, and I ran through most of them, and oh boy, <coughs> they were a lot. But I'm, I'm just going to highlight some of the things that I saw and kind of like. And uh, like this one, yesterday when I was watching the MLP uh, final on TV, my mom was watching it with me. As the episode played out, she kept asking me, this show is for kids right <laughs> and Big Jim answered it's for everyone which is true which is true the creators of the show created the show in a way that it appeals to everyone and it was great <coughs> so let's bounce for a few here okay who gave Celestia and Luna their wings it was never decided internally whether they officially oh sorry um what their officially official backstory was fuel for the fanfics <laughs> all right um there's fuel so uh, applejack yon bar star light cross sunburst gala slash star Str silver stream and flutter court cannon is up to the individu individual viewers to decide what those are to each other. Gotta leave you with some things to debate. <laughs> and yeah, um, a lot of people, or yeah, a lot of people have been kind of talking and debating about this fact. And the the Rare Jack fans are at harm's with this because their ship is quote unquote non canon because of this. But like Big Jim said, it's up to us to debate what their relationship is. In all honesty, with Apple Dash and Rare Jack, why not Apple Rare Dash Jack? <laughs> why not all of them, right? Like the three of them, they, they, they could do some fun stuff. And as for um, the rest, <coughs> it's up to our imagination to have a lot of fun with it. And you know what? Let's let's rock. Let's rock with it because we as the fans can do whatever we want with the characters. Now that the show quote unquote is over, we can do we we can make fan fictions about um, Sandbar being in a relationship with Gallus or Yona being in a relationship with um, who now uh, Silverstream and so on. There, there is a lot of options for us fans to deal with. Um, I'm gonna take one. La oh, this one's a good one. All right. When you guys were planning the unreleased Zebra Homeland episode, were you thinking that all zebras would speak in rhymes, or is that just something special about Sakura? It didn't make, sorry, it didn't make it that far to have officially decided but we did have this very discussion some of the writers expressed trepidation at having to write rhymes for a bunch of characters which is understandable and here's the thing rhymes are not easy yet they're not hard they're just annoying at times and Having to write rhymes for a bunch of characters is going to be hard and annoying. <coughs> and 
And you know what? Um, I'll just give you one more, one more. And th this one is a bit sad. What about Granny Smith? No one lives forever. Oh well. She she was old. And it was kind of sad. But hey, uh, there's a lot of uh, questions and answers here. Like I'm just going to scroll through. You can see that there is a lot to cover. Um, was there ever plans to try out? I'm sorry, to try to work Sunset in somehow? Nope. She was created for Equestria Girls, and that crew did the best with her. We always wanted her to be dealt with by the crew since they were in charge of her story. And that's interesting because, in all honesty, for the end of Season 9, I would have hoped or expected her to pop on by just to congratulate Twilight or something like that. But it seems that we won't be getting that because uh, two teams are working on separate IPs. Really interesting, really interesting. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop here. If I were to read this, we could have a field day on this. So yeah, um, stopping this and heading on to the next news. Yes. So, where well, I'll post comment on series finale to Instagram. So, <laughs> a, a lot of discussions or a lot of complaints were about when uh, the series finale opened. Uh, aired and stuff <coughs> and a lot of people were kind of salty that hey Pinkie Pie got married to cheese and stuff and you know I think they made a really good couple like they're meant for each other and that's pretty cool I, I dig it I really dig it but here's what he said um, let uh, lately, my timeline has been filled with accusation that I've been, sorry, I've had sexual relations with a horse. So, for the record, it just like I just like to state that that's not entirely accurate. <laughs> L L L. <coughs> well, I got no answer for this. <laughs> Um, it's him just being silly. I thought I'd just let you guys know. Since it's there, it's fun. Anyway, moving on to the next news. Enterplay released entire series 5 trading cards for... Uh, trading cards set for download. And I've downloaded this. And they're all there. I got no idea why they did this. This is kind of interesting. Like, give it a second. Sorry, but I was saying um, there was this is kind of interesting to have a company that deals in trading cards give out their assets for free for the public to download and do whatever they want. Technically, we can print this. We can do like I said. We can do whatever we want, and I don't know. This is one of those cases where. Why they why did they do this? Why? And there there's a few reasons. There's a few theories in my head going in. Um, one of those theories are the series is has ended, and technically there's no money to be made out of it. And remember, Enterplay is a company that deals in trading cards and whatnot. And if the IP or the brand has no life anymore, there's no point in, well, doing it. Like, you better cut your losses than try to recoup. By cutting out your losses, you kind of, well, recoup some of your cash or whatnot. <coughs> but in this scenario here, I got no idea. It could be that they still are going to do the Series 5 uh, trading cards and you know honestly let, let um having something physical in your hand is um great because you don't really or you 
in this case, you can collect them and trade them and get the whole play set. And like I like I mentioned before, having something of the exact same quality or um, something that they made for uh, the entire series is much fun. Like, for example, my magic cards, they're kind of awesome. Like, they feel good. They have this texture and stuff. Like, let's just say having a physical item in hand is great. You could say I could print it out. But at the same time, too, you won't have the same quality assurance as, as what they did for the card itself. And honestly, um, download it if you want. I sure did. And I'm not going to print them because there's a bunch of cards there. So yeah, that's going to be something else. So yeah, who knows? Maybe you can print it out in your own size. That's an option. Yeah, you, you could make it into an A4 size paper or whatever size you like. Yeah, there, there's always an option. <coughs> so anyway, uh, moving on to the next news. Like I said, we have a lot of news this week. I'm not going to read this one, guys. I'm not. But um, long story short, someone over on the Twitters asked Big Jim, how do you identify a male Kirin from a female Kirin? And the answer is by their eyelashes. And let's see. Um, uh, wh wh what can I see? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm trying to find the question, but is it this one? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, let's see what this one says. Okay. Um, Big Jim just says, No, uh, we were not able to do different male and female design due to time constraint. So, in that case, the difference between male and female Kirin is their eyelashes. And in all honesty, that's pretty interesting because if they had the time, we could have different design Kirins for male model and female model. Maybe, you know what? I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm just going to throw it out there. If they did have the time, the male Kirins would look like male ponies, like Braeburn or Big Mac and so on. Because, well, look at them. They're almost similar. Just their ears and their horns and their hooves and so on. And maybe their tails. But pony if they had the time to make a model probably they can work it out but as for now um to identify a male and a female Kieran is by their eyelashes <coughs> and talking about eyelashes um little cheese is apparently a cult and not a filly kind of <laughs> more questions for big jim so someone asked Big Jim, so just popping this out here as a question, but Little Cheese is a cult or a filly? Big Jim just blatantly answered, cult. <clears throat> and someone popped in and just asked, or just commented, were the eyelashes on Little Cheese a mistake then? It's... I think that's what's causing a lot of confusion since only the girl ponies have eyelashes. And Big Jim just says, nope, he's just super cute. Oh, cool. That cleared things up then. <laughs> and Josh Haber, uh, I think he's the writer, uh, just says that since this has come, sorry, since this has become an issue, I'll answer here as well. We never identify this pony at script as anything more than Pinky's, uh, Pinky and Cheese's child. We didn't assign a gender as it wasn't important for the moment we were going for, which was just a re reveal that they exist. Hmm. And you know what? Sometimes uh, scenarios like this 
tend to happen because uh, in the moment that this happened or the finale happened, they just wanted to show that hey, Pinky and uh, Pinky and Cheese had a child, and here how the child looks like. Uh, he has, she has the oh, <laughs> uh, little Cheese has the poofy mane like um, his mom, and her what you call this coat color is almost like his dad. So, yeah, we got we got no idea. Um, this is gonna spark a lot of, I won't say controversy, or debate on what's going on with Little Cheese. I I know that, um, gender thingy is kind of a big deal in the West right now, and in all honesty, I'm just saying that this is kind of a quote unquote mistake by the animators. Like uh, Josh said, uh, it wasn't stated that um, Little Cheese was supposed to be a cult or a filly. And this here is one of those, uh, what you call this, um, silly mistakes or surprise, something like that. I don't know. But it's one of those cases where it will be interesting to see where this goes in the future, if it does go anywhere. But for now... Uh, for you guys at home who take this too seriously, you can probably debate that Little Cheese is a filly because of the eyelashes. So let's go with that because um, Josh Haber says something. <laughs> yeah, wh why not, right? Why not? So anyway, that is the news for this week. So whew, that, that was something. That was something. Uh, let's see. <coughs> let's go for what have I been doing with my week? And in all honesty, um, mm, nothing much really. I been I've been busy with work, um, doing that and whatnot. Um, played a bit of Magic the Good Ring, so that's awesome on my end. Like, uh, like the per usual. But on a personal level, I went out on a quote-unquote date. <laughs> and um, it's been, what, almost seven years, was it, that I said that I've been doing this show? So, yeah, um, I know it's, it's not something I want to talk about, like, personally, but it's something I did. And... The story here, I'm just going to summarize. Met her online on a dating, quote-unquote, site. Okay, I'm just going to say it out. It's Facebook dating. It, it's there. I, yeah, I just use Facebook dating. So, she pinged me, and we got into contact. We exchanged phone numbers, and we went out on a, quote-unquote, date. Um, nothing too serious. We are just friends. And we had a meal. Uh, she had steak. I had steak too. Then we ate. We walked around the mall for a bit. Then we had ice cream. Then she had to go home because she had to work the next day. So, yeah. And we we're still in contact. We we're talking a lot. So that's fun. Other than that, um, nothing much. Probably we'll meet again sometime in the future. Uh, maybe we'll go watch a movie. Maleficent's out. She wants to watch it. I don't mind it. Because if I watch a bad movie, if I watch a horrible movie, that will be entertaining for you guys at home who will be listening to my quote-unquote review at the start of the year when we do the MBS show movie review of 2019 so yeah if it if if it infuriates me you guys will be entertained if it entertained me you guys have a good movie to watch so it's a win-win okay <laughs> but anywho yeah um that's the news for this week that's the show for this week and well um 
as per usual, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can do so at um, <coughs> thembshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget, sorry, um, yeah, iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Um, if you like, if you would please uh, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion podcast on iTunes and also Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, and Torterra reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and specials. And also, we like to do other things. We like to do anime and movies. So that's something for the future. And if you're wondering what happened to Sapphire Heart Song. She is on break for a bit. Uh, college has been kicking her butt and she needs the quote-unquote break to, well, stabilize and get things on track. She'll be around when she's uh, stabilized and we all miss her. We all miss her. So, anywho, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show with every support. Or you'll get a week's early access to review in discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Master of Lag, Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and well, I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya!